Hello, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. And today we're here to talk about HP Perliant BL465C Gen 8 Server Memory Upgrade Kits and how to properly configure the system. So normally we just hop right into our videos, but hey, it's late tonight. We're up here making videos, trying to help people learn. Uh, so we figured, hey, let's have a little fun. Uh, we wanted to thank all of our subscribers and the people that actually like our videos. We really, truly appreciate that. So hey, we thought maybe we can do a virtual cheers and do a one minute beer. So hit pause, go grab a beer, and let's do a one minute beer together. All right, hopefully you're back. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. I got my timer right here. So three, two, one, you have one minute to finish. Go! It's kind of a little tradition around here. Whenever we have uh, you know holiday parties or um, we like to do poker nights and just have some fun together as a team. We all work really hard, so we figured, you know, let's have some fun, and uh, we like to do one-minute beers together. It's kind of like a little tradition. So I better stop talking. We've got 35 seconds left. I might be behind on this one. 25 seconds. <sighs> 15 seconds. We're almost there. Ah, uh, eight seconds. We did it. <laughs> so, well, three, two, one. All right, well, thank you for indulging me before we get started on the video. And thanks again uh, for stopping by. So let's go ahead and actually hop into what you wanted to watch tonight. For starters, the HP Proliant BL465C Gen 8 is actually just like the BL460C Gen 8. The only difference is that the 460C takes Intel Prox, and this actually takes AMD Opteron 6200 or 6300 series CPUs. There are two CPU sockets, and the socket is a G34 socket. Uh, this accepts the DDR3 memory, and there are 16 DIMM slots. There are uh, a number of different speeds that you can use for this machine. You can use uh, 1066, 1333, 1600, or all the way up to 1866, which is actually what we recommend. There's a number of different sizes you can use as well. You can use 4 gig, 8 gig, uh, 16 gig, or all the way up to 32 gig. No, unfortunately, you cannot use 64 gig LRDMs. We definitely tried, and unfortunately, they don't work on this machine. Um, and there's uh, two types of RAM that you can use. You can use ECC registered, or you can use LRDMs. With uh, ECC registered, also known as RDIM, uh, you can max out at uh, a total of 512 gigabytes, 16 by 32 gig at 1600 megahertz. With LRDMs, you can max out uh, the same 512 gigabytes, uh, but you can go all the way up to uh, 1866 megahertz, also 16 by 32 gig. So uh, enough about the, uh, the, the types of RAM. Let's go ahead and open it up and show you how to put it in and take out your old RAM and all that good stuff. But I always recommend before you get into any machine, you should wear your ESD gear. So we're going to go grab that and be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we are safe to open the machine. So this is how you do it. You want to push this button right here, the hood release. Now I will note, uh, sometimes this thing can be a pain in the butt to open, uh, and you, it's actually easier if I were to flip it around. Uh, we've kind of preset it up to make it a little bit easier for me, but you're going to put this down and pop back, and then you'll, you'll hear it click, and then you can open it up. Um, like I said, sometimes you have to push it a little bit hard to really open the top. Uh, it is what it is, but uh, don't think that um, if you're struggling, you're the only ones. <laughs> so uh, now that we're in, I want to show you a couple more things. So as we discussed, there's two CPUs, uh, CPU 1 and CPU 2 over here. Um, this um, uh, is important because to note, let's say you're only running with one CPU, then you can only use the DIMM slots associated with CPU 1. If you're uh, running both CPUs, then obviously you can use both uh, uh, all, all 16 DIMM slots. So now we're going to show you how to actually access the DIMM slots. You'll notice there is um, an air shroud with this card over it. You're going to want to lift straight up, and, and I seriously mean straight up because unfortunately right here there is a little uh, board that is connected here in a connector. Um, it, this is what I see is the most common thing that people damage when they're trying to uh, get into uh, the machine as, as, as a whole. Um, they're worried about the cables and I get that because there's not a lot of room here but you still want to lift straight up because you do not want to damage um, the board over here. Okay, So let's go ahead and I'll show you how to do it. You're just going to pull straight up 
Okay, and I, 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 you can hear it and you can feel the notches coming out, and then you're just gonna flip this over right here, okay? And that way you don't have to fully um, disassemble and take all the SATA cables and everything off, right? So, um, all right, now that we're in, I wanna uh, show you a couple other things. You will notice that the dim slots are colored. This is very important because uh, not everybody is maxing out their machine, even though that's definitely what I recommend. It's kind of the point of blades, but um, if you are not maxing out your machine, um, you need to make sure you're configuring it properly, right? So the white dim slot is the start of the channel, and HP is actually labeled it over here. It says dim one, uh, dim A, right? Um, and then it continues to go. So let's just say you were running one CPU and you were only using four uh, dims. Then you would want to use the these four white slots. The importance of this is basically you want to have uh, the proper load balance, okay? Um, so if you were to put them in the first four slots, these two black slots included that I just uh, popped out, uh, the problem with that is you're only utilizing two memory channels. So of course, if you're using four memory channels, you, you're going to be able to get more. Um, you're going to be able to support a heavier load, right? Uh, so it's it's kind of important just to make sure that you're balancing everything out properly. Uh, these simple little things will just increase your overall performance um, and just uh, give you a better overall user experience. So. Now I'm gonna show you actually how to physically load them. We're actually gonna max this whole thing out. Um, we have right here some 32 gig load reduced 1866s. It's top line for this machine. Um, and we're selling uh, several of these to one of our customers right now. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to properly uh, do everything. So one of the things that I like to note, there's actually really two things that, that I think are uh, just kind of user friendly. You don't have to do them, uh, but they're just they're just helpful when you're, um, when you're loading modules up. I like to pop all the tabs in advance, okay? I like them all to be just wide open, so that way, let's say I'm loading this machine and I already have a module in my hand, I don't wanna be fumbling around, um, you know, potentially drop the module, potentially hold the module improperly, just little things to make it easier, okay? Um, the other thing that I like to note, um, and, it, and this kinda goes from system to system, this system is actually kinda a tight squeeze on both sides but if you're um, if you're assembling a machine and the heat sink is excuse me if the heat sink is uh, right uh, you know on there and there's a tight squeeze I actually like to start with the tighter squeezes and then work my way in um, if I'm maxing it out of course if you're not maxing out you got to pay attention to the channels like we talked about but if you're filling every slot up it doesn't really matter which way you start. Um, so I, I like to work my way in just to make it a little bit easier for me, just, just simple things. So anyhow, I'm gonna go ahead and get this rolling. One thing I'd also like to note, um, there's a notch right here, also known as a key. This key is important. Uh, it prevents users from one, putting in the wrong module. So if you try to put in a DDR2 module or a newer DDR4 module, it physically just would not fit. Uh, but it also is important because uh, this notch, this key is not dead center, okay? Uh, so this notch, this key right here, is not dead center. Um, and the problem with that is that um, when you try to uh, install the module the wrong way, let's say you have it flipped around the wrong way, you can do one of two things. You can damage the leads on the module itself, or you could damage the motherboard. If you damage the motherboard, you basically have to replace the whole machine, and nobody wants that. So uh, just a couple little things that I'd like to note just to, uh, so everyone has a good experience. So uh, now we're going to go ahead and start popping these in. Um, another thing, so you need to line this up, and another thing I like to note is when you put these in, and this is definitely a tight squeeze as we were talking about how there's some of the edges are tight squeeze. When you put this in, uh, it might feel like right now, it actually even kind of feels like it's in. It is not. You're going to hear this click. You hear that click? That click is important. It lets you know that you've fully seated the modules. All too often do we hear from customers that they think they have uh, one or two bad modules. And especially if we hear them say that they think they have two bad modules, it's generally because they've tried to install it in the start of the channel and you can't use the second part of the channel. And so they think they have two bad dims. And really what it is, is they have not fully inserted the module properly. And if you don't seat it properly, it's gonna throw errors and then you're gonna run into issues. So now I'm actually gonna stop and go to the outside because for me, Personally, it makes it just easier. This last one is a nice little tight squeeze, and I want to just make it as easy as possible. So now I'm coming back in. So, all right, now 
we're just going to keep on loading. And just like that, you can see how easy it really is. And one thing I also like to at the end is make sure all your tabs are pushed in. Make sure everything's fully seated. Just these little things to make sure everything is good. So really, it was that simple. And we now, I mean, we've maxed it out. We've got 1632 gigs in. Uh, it's going to be at 1866. I mean, that's, that's going to be a heck of an improvement compared to... Uh, its previous performance. So uh, now we're going to go ahead and put this back together. You're going to want to flip this over. You need to be careful because there's not, again, a lot of leeway here. You're going to line these little notches up right here that stick out. You need to make sure that you insert this board back in straight down and properly. Okay? So we're going to get everything lined up. And you hear that little click. That's to let you know that it's it's been inserted properly. So, cool. Well, thanks for stopping by. Um, if you need to upgrade your machine at all, uh, definitely uh, reach out to us at sales at cloudninjas.com. We'd love to help you. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, do us a favor. Click the subscribe button down below and like it. And uh, thanks again for stopping by. Have a great day.